Hello everybody, welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan. My name is Steve, Jonathan is off for the day, and I thought I'd just take a little time with you blokes to go and do a little video here on line weights. Um, right here, the artwork we're going to be using is from another YouTube user, and his name, if I can remember it correctly, will be right underneath into the information bar. Uh, so thank you for submitting your question. And uh, I say we just dive right into it, will shall we? Now, some of the things that you want to be uh, looking about, uh, you know, for, for the whole principles of, of line weights, uh, an easy solution that you could look at is um, if, if you have an established light source, and if you don't, make one. But we'll assume, just for the purpose of this video, we'll keep it basic for everybody. Let me just go ahead and make that a full screen there, so we can see this cat. So if we zoom in, and we will presume on this guy right here, that this is where the light source is going to be hitting him. Any opposing line from that light source should be darker. Now, what we're going to do just for this first example here is the line weights I'm going to use are probably the more traditional type that most of you guys will probably be using. Well, all you need to do is um, use some pressure sensitivity, or if you're using, uh, you know, some sort of brush, you can go ahead and toss that all on in there. So let's just go ahead in here and we'll do his face. Now, um, what we talked about earlier is any opposite side of the light source is what you want to darken up. So essentially the entire right hand side of this bloke right here is going to be, uh, you know, all covered in shadow. So I'm just going to basically trace, you know, get a little thick around the back there. And as you're coming around, coming on down, there you go. Presto, changeo, all of a sudden this cat's got some some weight all knocked in there. But he does, it looks like an outline. And if that's the style you're going for, that's great. If it's not the style you're going for, you're probably going to want to go in here and add some more details, make it look a little bit more lively. And the easiest way to do that is all these lines right in here. You see how, how it curves, it curves the formation of his body. You can go ahead and you can just, you know, block that in like that, block it in, block it in. And you could, you could do that for, through the entire image. And I'll just quickly do it here to show you. Just so you can see what I'm talking about. That doesn't look too good. And, and just because it's on the right side of his body, you can't forget the other half. Right down in here, you know, you got, the light's not hitting in there. So we're going to throw some more lights in there. Or some more shadows, I should say. And we'll even go ahead and put a little line weight down on this. Uh, like that. And you can instantly see that what it does is it makes it look like it's actually in a little bit of a 3D environment. Which is what we're trying to go for. We're trying to give it some realism. Um, and that's not a knock at the artwork that I'm using. Uh, I think this artwork is great. I think it works perfectly. Right here, this is a great example of something we can do with the exact same light source. Now, another thing I should have mentioned is... If your light source is coming from the top left, naturally all the sides or the line light art that you already have at the bottom should be in shadow. Now that also relates to this guy right here. Just because he's closer to that uh, light source doesn't mean you can't go in there and toss in a couple lines, keep it real. So we'll go in there like that. And uh, the reason why I'm talking about using it in uh, different you know, pressure sensitivities, because most of us are probably using brushes. If you're using a micron, I'm going to show you uh, how I would do it with that. So we're just going to go in here and we're going to change them up the them lines. Just like that. And even up here. Remember, we can't forget this little guy up here. So we're going to put him up in there, make him feel like he's part of the team. You know, little lines in there. You go ahead and you can, you know, you can get crazy with this. You could spend all day just going in here and into these tight little corners here and just tossing in little shadows. Always feels good. And I'm hoping just by you guys seeing that, that you can see a little change in the way things are going. Um, you know, you could go ahead and when you start to use shadows, you know, and you start playing with light, you can really start really jazzing things up. So let's assume that I'm just going to render the living hell out of this thing here. And, um... We just want to put some shadows in there. What's really cool about using line weights is it kind of tells you where the shadows are going to go before the shadows are even there, which is really cool. Makes your job as an artist a little easier. So we'll just go ahead. We'll go ahead and we'll just come up and all up in that. Yeah, we'll render the living hell out of that there too. 
And um, you know, since because you have that, you can even go in here. Let's zoom in. Let's get crazy. Let's let's toss some more rendering in there. Oh, look at that. And I realize this isn't a rendering video, but I just wanted to quickly touch on this just so you could see. So if we zoom out, and that might be a little bit overkill, but when you zoom out, it looks, you know, it looks half decent. Maybe to me, to you guys, you might think that's overkill. That's cool. So what we're going to do, actually, let me close this one, because um, this, uh, this bloke here who sent this art over, he actually had a really cool one that I wanted to touch upon. Right there, look at that. Look at this guy with that sword. That's what I'm talking about. That's the business. Now... The easiest way that I like to do this is, another thing to keep in mind actually, is anything that's coming close towards us, like this guy, look at that, that should have a thicker line around it, you know, the, the, the closer the lines are to you, the more, the more, you know, thick they are, the more rich, the more powerful they are, definitely going to want to capitalize on that and make a little bit more of a powerful image, just let me uh, shave this guy out of the picture, we don't need him. That's going to take too long, so we're just going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Sorry about that. He's gone. Let's make a new layer. Now, this is usually how I've been doing most of my comic book work. I know a lot of people that go in there and they'll do this this nice line art like this, but it's kind of flat, and it looks like he was inking this with a micron or just a generic tip pen with no pressure on it, like a like a brush. You know, like when you're using those ink brushes, and that's fine. Um, I like a little bit of a heavier heavier uh, line weight to it. Let me just see how this is looking. I'll beef that sucker up just just a skimmage. And uh, all you need to do is go in there and just oh, treat it with some love. And all you're doing really is just looking for that line weight. You know, look at that line weight. We're just beefing it up a little bit. You can get a little crazy with it. And the, the beautiful part about this is you're going to come back and you're going to go ahead and toss in that really cool rendering that we just talked about. Okay, I'm going to insert. <laughs> ah, I apologize for all that. I feel a little crazy today. Um, all right, so what you're looking at doing here is just tossing in like a, a flat line. Um, what you had done in here was really awesome with it looked like a you know how I normally would have done it this would have been your first pass with that nice tight line art everything's the same the next step you do is or the next step you would take is just go over top of it all with a thicker line and if you are using a micron uh, just grab a thicker one maybe even almost double the the width that you're already using and uh, whoops just kind of trace that outline and what this also lets you do is uh, you're going to see as soon as we start inking, um, you know, things start to come to come together pretty quickly. So let's just go in there. Boom. Let's get him. So if I zoom out right away, um, it might look a little bit better. I, I don't know. That's up to you guys. I'll turn it off so you can see it. Um, and all we did there was just add a little bit beefier of a line. However, we got this gigantic thing coming at us that's foreshortened. So we're going to even double the size of that. We'll get a little crazy with this. And, um, actually, I'll just start from here. You just kind of pick a point. You don't want to make it too abrupt. Um, but since we're not working with uh, pressure sensitivity at all, you know, we're just working with a, a, the flat shape here. Um, it's hard to make that transition into a, I don't want to say a gradient, but you'll see once we get to it here. Um, and the reason we're using like this heavier line, if I just zoom out just from that one little bit, you can see it's 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 bigger now, right? Like it's it's pushing pushing things forward. Um, so I'll just grab the pressure sensitive brush here. Uh, you're going to want to make it at least as big as your uh, the the thickest line weight. So that looks about right. Now what we can do is you just start you know picking where it was connected there and just kind of connect it. This could take a little bit of finesse. You know, a little clean up. So now if you look at the sword, all of a sudden, it's the line weight is actually getting bigger. And I mean, you could work that, you know, I'm just trying to show that example. And don't forget about, like, it, it applies to every single line. So you can get even thicker down here. Um, I would use a pressure sensitivity on this, or like if you're using a brush, 
I would definitely use that on here because you can start to get play around with the shapes a little bit better. And uh, you know, same in here. I don't want to forget any lines. So when we zoom out, it might look like, and, and this is a style choice right here, okay? Like, you might not like a gigantic thick border around everything, but that principle still applies, you know? Uh, it's easier to translate foreshortening when you have thicker outlines. It just, it just works. Um, so if you can find a way to manipulate that into your style without it making, like, some people might not be fans of anime or manga, and they, do, they tend to do this kind of thing a lot. Um, so I totally understand if that's not something you're into. But, uh, you know, certain things do work. So play around with your style. See how, how thick you can get those lines to go without, it, you know, breaking the way you like uh, like things. And uh, once we have uh, our outline, actually, I, we haven't even established the line weights part yet, really, for, like, the shadowing. We'll say the light, again, has come from the top. We'll just keep it simple because everybody, you know, enjoys simple. So any line that's opposing, you know, hitting, you know, any of these areas needs to be in shadow. So we'll start with this face. And again, just with the pressure sensitivity there. Get in on the nose there a little bit. Side of his face. I'm just going to color in his eyes just for, just for myself. Okay, now the light's not hitting the inside of the ear. And this is where, you know, your, your style and taste again. How nitpicky you're going to get with those lines. Uh, but the fundamental rule here is to keep it consistent. So all of these lines, not directly affected by that light. This one would be, because it's his forearm popping up, so I'm just going to do the outsides of it there. Um, also, the sword is popping up over, so we're going to get a little thicker there. His whole finger side on this side is not hit by light. Again, down there wouldn't be, down there wouldn't be. Same with there, same with there. Uh, it would gradually disappear there. Um, get that guy. Uh, all of this isn't hit by light underneath of it, so it's kind of doing a cast shadow thing. Maybe, maybe that's an easier way to think about it too. Is uh, cast shadows? I'll do a quick example again with the ball because everybody seems to understand that. If this was the ball and the light source was the same as the image we're working on, all under there would be in shadow. But the cast shadow. This guy is important. That's a big deal. That solidifies the ball being on a plane, okay? So if you can think of um, cast shadows, that's an easy way to think about uh, line weights on an object. Because, yeah, we're not going as drastic as what I just showed you, but uh, what we're also doing is kind of using that methodology to uh, help, help your brain, you know, process what you're asking it to do. We're going to zoom out in a second here, just so you can see what's going on. Um, all this is fine. Actually, you know, theoretically, all of this here would even be thicker lines because it's not being hit by that one light source. And it's going to make it even bigger down there. Click. And zoom in. Oops. Again, just try to finesse it. Anyway, uh, let's just zoom out. So you can see right away, hopefully, uh, that it looks like it has a little bit more impact to it. Uh, if I can just turn the layers off so you can see. So this was the original. Let's say you didn't want to do the outline and we just had the, the line weights. That's kind of what it would look like. It's, it's helping it place, you know, it's help giving it a place. Uh, but for myself, like when you had that one outline, it just makes it look like it all comes together. And like, again, like we just talked about, because of that shadows, or because of uh, where you have your line weights, now you know where your shadows should be, you know, they, they still kind of follow a style. Again, everything's always about your style, what you like, and hopefully it changes as you get older. Because if it stays the same, chances are you're going to get bored with it. And you're not going to grow. And if you're not growing, you're dying. All right, so you'd have all that. We're just going to put that in shadow. Uh, I'm a big fan of using shadow. 
and using line weights was an easy way to make that transition into learning how to do shadow, uh, you know, properly. That takes practice. I'm still learning. Uh, but I'm glad that I learned myself because, or at least have some sort of concept. Um, I still need to practice just like everybody else. But, uh, you know, once you start playing with shadow and stuff, it starts to give your, your art just a little bit, you know, different taste. And who knows, you might like it, you might you might not, right? Um, but there's only one way to find out. And that's to practice it out. So we're just going to try to wrap this up here. And all the veins in his hands, again, I'm only shading the one side on the left there because of the light, the way that it's hitting. And, you know, you could even put some shininess over there or something. But anyway, uh, let's just zoom out and see how that looks. I mean, and th this right there, that's totally, again, your call. How far you want to uh, push and pull this kind of thing. Um, you know, so uh, I hope that helped you guys out. If not, uh, maybe we could get another video going and, uh, you know, touch up on some of the subjects uh, that this may have seemed like it overlooked on some of you guys or uh, maybe maybe it helped you out. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Sorry about that intro. Just felt a little crazy. So I wanted to try something different there just for fun. And uh, if you got any comments, questions, or concerns or anything like that, you can email me at Jonathan underscore A underscore Rector at Hotmail.com. I leave a message on YouTube here. Comment. Uh, any other videos you guys would like to see? I got some big stuff planned. Um... I'm going to save this kind of thing uh, for the next video that I will be posting, but I just reached over 500 subscribers, so uh, if you're watching this, I'm hoping you're a subscriber. If not, click subscribe, share this video, share some of my other stuff. Um, that'd be fantastic, but I have a big announcement kind of thing coming up to kind of celebrate the, the, the big occasion to me, you know, being able to get 500 people. Uh, yeah, it's only 500 people, but the fact that it is 500 people and it's, it's going to increase from there um, needs... It means I need to start changing how things are going with the channel in a positive way. So thank you guys for helping me get there. Look forward to that video, and um, and I will say there's going to be some prizes too. So you know I want to just give back a little bit, and um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good time. Take care. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.